Hey there, commercial construction coffee talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like. We're digital now, but uh, okay, I'm just grabbing things out of the archives. This is uh, July, August 2018. Todd Carmichael, uh, co founder and CEO of La Colombe. They were a coffee shop actually out of Philly. So, uh, Todd, thanks for gracing the cover way back when. Another good looking issue. This one was uh, 148 pages. And I always like to see where I was at. Here I am. I'm up in Buffalo on the jet boat underneath the uh, Niagara Falls River. And uh, it was an awesome time up there. We had our women's retreat back there. And uh, uh, the falls was great. And then we had lunch in Lewiston. And then we did uh, the jet boat uh, below the uh, falls. And uh, it was awesome. People got very wet. but uh, the jet boat was really close, so uh, that was a really fun trip. But it's always nice to hold the magazine uh, to see what was going on way back when. And uh, actually, I had a little more hair back then, you know. But uh, oh well, you know, what are you gonna do? But uh, we went. Uh, the last issue we printed was August of '21, uh, when we had the VP construction of White Castle on our cover, and uh, we haven't looked back since. And I want to thank everybody out there that's uh, been hitting our website and consuming content and the videos and the magazine and everything else that we do. Couldn't have gotten there without you. Your goal to my book, and this is Thanksgiving week, so I'm thankful for your uh, relationship with us up on the web. Um, so with that said, I've got a gentleman out in one of my favorite states, and I know you know what I'm gonna say, Denver, Colorado, you know, cause I'm a DU Pio. Um, anyway, his name is Chris Hale, and he's the CEO of technology response team he's an it guy and so uh say hello to our listeners out there on commercial construction coffee talk chris hey nice to see everybody i'm glad you're on thank you for having me yeah absolutely absolutely and uh you know listen once again the way that chris got on his publicist sent me a press release and uh, we just had added our it column so i'm all about it these days and uh with our new uh, column that's in the magazine i was like hey this would be a really good guest to have on there so welcome to the show uh the way it works is uh you're going to tell us your story where you grew up where you went to school you know any children dogs cats what have you and then uh how you ended up where you are today and um then we'll talk about lessons learned from the roller coaster that we've all been on over the last three and a half years and then you'll leave uh one positive thought or phrase and your contact info but before we get into your story i do have a sponsor uh they're called the contractor consultants and it's a short little video so please enjoy it and then we'll pick up and we'll get back with the show hey everybody for all you contractors out there struggling to hire i want to introduce you to a partner dear friends of mine the contractor consultants this is the company that is putting recruiters and staffing agencies out of business so if you're a construction business right now and you're struggling to hire you want to grow and expand your team next year and you're sick and tired of sifting resumes and all the administrative burden of hiring well i've got something very special for you these guys have figured it out they've made construction hiring faster easier and a lot more affordable dot they're endorsed by ZipRecruiter, indeed and they work nationwide across all 87 industries so if you want to put your hiring to bed for a small monthly fee and learn a new way a better way a more effective way to hire in our industry schedule a call and learn more about this new hiring solution text hire to 66866 that's hire to 66866 worst case scenario you show up on the call and you'll learn a few things you didn't already know about hiring these guys wrote the book the course and are doing it every day welcome to the show and thank you for listening all right everybody thanks for watching uh, the contractor consultants video hopefully you got some of something from it and listen if you're if you're hiring people for your construction teams and so forth give them a call use the use the uh, text number i gave to you and have a little discussion with them they can help you they're experts they do it every day just like i said in the video and uh, hopefully uh, uh they can help you as well so with that said uh like uh chris you got to tell us your story so the floor is yours all right um, let's so hear it 
I am a native to Colorado, which is kind of rare nowadays. I, I'm sure back in your day, most people were natives. When I was growing up, it was a lot of natives. Californians, you know, or, you know, yeah. a lot. Listen, you were either from the East Coast or the West Coast when you went to school at DU. And uh, I was one, you know, and so, but now all the Californians, instead of, you know, just going to school and then going back, now they've all moved in back in there. So oh, it's yeah. a completely different state than when I was there in the 80s. And, uh, you know, I was there when they had, uh, the USFL, the Denver Gold, the Denver Zephyrs, the Rockies weren't there, the the hockey team wasn't there. Well, they had a pro team. It was terrible. And then they moved them up to Quebec. Uh, but now you go back and it's unbelievable. Between uh, Denver and Colorado Springs, it was rolling green hills when I was there. Now it's just a basically it's a I-25 south between Denver and Sea Springs. It's basically just a corridor and out out outskirts of denver in my opinion they got the train you know centennial was a little dinky town now it's huge aurora i could go down the list but i was or i always do you know I, whenever i go out i go and drive around i go through do you see the coaching staff and stuff but uh it's amazing how much they built in the outskirts in in oh, there for sure yeah i grew up in aurora and aurora was tiny i, I mean um actually after this call i have to make a drive down to what used to be fields in Aurora for a client. Um, and now it's houses and businesses and everything else. I mean, these are places that we used to go in high school to hide out from the police to <laughs> go have our our uh, little keg parties that we would hide from. And now it's nothing but residential and business areas. So yeah, um, yeah. went to Smoky Hill High School in Aurora, not far from Traeger Crest where we were talking about earlier. And um, no, and then went to CSU. I played lacrosse actually and football in high school. Um, college didn't do a whole lot. Just I had a I did uh, computer information systems and then exercise sport man sport management as my minor, and kind of just fell into IT in the long run of things. And got into IT worked for Sports Authority, which is great. Uh, there used to be a um, yeah when they were around, right? Yeah, yeah, there used to be one up in uh, Frisco, Dillon, actually, that we would go up to and because I was an employee in their IT group. We got cost plus 10%. So you go up there and buy like $40 pair of gloves for like five bucks. So like, oh, nice. And I would stop there every time on our way up to go ski like Keystone or Breckenridge or whatever, A Basin. Um, yeah. And then um, kind of fell into that. Uh, then got into what we call managed services, which what we kind of are, our, my company is now, worked for some small companies, had a buddy that, that came to me and wanted to start a company. And we started this and I'm the lone survivor out of the beginning of that. And that was in 2010. So I've kind of gone through that. Um, married, have two daughters. One goes to ASU and she's into, uh, she does graphic design with at ASU is her major. Uh, younger daughter, got a couple of dogs, a border collie and a three-legged uh, miniature Australian shepherd. Uh, basically, the this whole thing has just blossomed from uh, a two-man shop to a one-man shop then to multiple employees and we've just grown year over year and kind of became an established thing so it's been a great ride all the way around but definitely interesting well listen it's always nice to talk to a denverite you know like i said it's kind of like my second home and uh, uh when i grew up my parents used to take me out of school for a month uh i was from new york and philly and i get tutored learned how to ski on buttermilk and uh uh my my dad loved Aspen, and then uh, my uncle moved out to uh, Vail in the late 60s, and he basically was a contractor and built everything. So we we had a house there for over over 30 years, and uh, so I'm very very fond of uh, of Denver and the mountains. And um, you know, we used to play CSU uh, Northern Colorado, CU. All, you know, it was before, in lacrosse back in the 80s. There were no there were no leagues, so we would play. You know, School of Mines, Air Force, and Colorado College were our big rivals in, in on the lack on the lax green. But during our spring break, we'd either go out west and play all the you know UCLA, USC, Whittier, et cetera, or we'd go down to Florida and play in uh, you know the tournaments down there. Now, uh, you know they've got their own lacrosse field and everything else, and it's blossomed. The hockey team is still killer. You know, you know, uh, winning national championship or out or or they're, or, they're, or they're in the in the hunt to raise the cup again. And uh, obviously, uh, they just took out CC uh, last weekend. I think it was to get the golden pan again. So that was always uh, it's a fun rival to to look at. But uh, all in all, uh, a skier, 
ex lacrosse player, previous yep. lacrosse player. Were, were you a D pole, a midi? What no, I was midi. I was small. I was mid midfield. So I I was smaller then. I graduated high school at like 155 pounds, and then my freshman year of college up to like 190. So yeah, took a well, little. Well, you know, listen, you know, CSU they had, they had a good team. You know, you know they had a good they had a good team, but now they you know they've got a D one team. I think they still have it. You know, they're and they uh uh anyway it, it's it, lacrosse back then. Uh, it was just getting started, and a lot of a lot of the high schools in, but now every high school, just like here in Georgia, all the high schools, they all yeah. have cross teams, and uh, it, it's very very competitive, and uh, it's just good to see the sport. Uh, obviously, with the pro pro league, uh, you know, getting uh, more and more exposure uh, on TV and on the web, and uh, so uh, and it's nice to have you know Air Force and DU and, and the other teams, regardless even if they're club teams, they're pushing the sport. And it's good to see that it's made the growth out, you know, in uh, the Rocky Mountain region. So um, let's talk about the the roller coaster. So back in March of 2020, everything basically, you know, comes to a halt. Uh, there was low unemployment, cranes everywhere, construction, everything was booming. And there was, oh, it'll be a couple of weeks and a couple of months. And here we are three and a half years and we're still talking about it. Talk about some of the lessons that you learned as you weather that, uh, you know, roller coaster ride and, you know, with your seatbelt, you know, tightly bound upon you uh, that our listeners out there, commercial construction, coffee talk might find of interest that they might be able to apply if they haven't already. Well, the biggest thing that we learned is we had to go from taking all of our clients being a brick and mortar type situation, having offices to going to remote in a matter of a week or two. I mean, all of them, top to bottom. With that came a lot of cybersecurity concerns, and those things uh, got taken advantage of over time. And the 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 cloud or the cloud, well, basically just the cloud environment is is a great environment for the remote and great environment to 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 share things through, but also just a very uh, precarious cybersecurity type situation. So. We had to take all of our clients to keep them up and running. We had to move it from all of everybody working in the office to everybody working at home within a week or two, which was a huge impact on my team. That was a lot of work. And then from that point on, it was uh, being more reactive in the beginning and then becoming more proactive as time went on to the cybersecurity issues that were coming down the, from that. Um, making sure that we had uh, multi-factor authentication on all the everything, making sure that things were controlled uh, one of the things that came out of that is uh, the zero trust, which is basically the idea, either on the application level or on the software level, that the individual or the or the application trying to run only has access to the to absolute things they needed, because if those things become compromised from somebody from the outside, a bad actor or whatever, it allows them to do just amazingly terrible things and move laterally across the company. So, uh, and really the low hanging fruit was the big piece that people were looking for. It's not the top end hackers that are looking, it's the, the low end that are looking for the people they send a phishing email to, the things that allow, where you give away your password, you give away these things and have the ability to get in and, and just do a lot of damage, not just to the company, but we've seen it where they've gotten in and gotten to people's HR records and able to get to social security numbers, account numbers, those kind of things that cause some real damage. Yeah, you know, I, it, security on the web, it is, uh, it, it, it's a double-edged sword because if you ever need any help, you can't get anybody's phone. That's my real beef with any, you know, listen, I, I when I went digital, I've been taking classes this whole year. I'm just about ready to launch my digital agency, but security is just so, so important if, if you're going to have a presence on the web. And what's amazing is you can launch a website and in about 30 seconds, you're getting attacked. Yeah. you know, by the spiders or, you know, bots or whatever it might be out there. And it is just crazy. And uh, uh, last year, uh, I had about 29 million people that hit the website. And that was right when Elon had bought in Twitter and was found out that a lot of the bots were, a lot of the accounts were fake and all that kind of stuff. And so I asked my web guy. Now, my web guy, he was a cyber security guy in the Army. He also was with the uh, Fair Fair. Fax uh, County Sheriff Office of Virginia, still a security clearance, and uh, he's all about security. So I said, "Hey, we have all these, we have all these people hidden. I, I'm, I'm just curious, how many of those are bots?" So we found out that about 20, 25 percent of those were bots on our stats. 
So I want to be transparent with everybody because I get people that send me content to post and you just don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from all over the world. Some of the, most of the people that I deal with, these bloggers are, are on the up and up, but you know, they put these little tracking things in there or, you know, uh, I've got serious software, you know, antivirus on there and I, and I see when I'm getting, you know, what I'm blocked. But so we put the software on there and I go through it and it is just amazing how many people are trying to attack my site every day and, you know, get in there. And uh, uh, it, it's a nightmare. I mean, I, I literally, I think that hackers are terrorists, in my opinion. Uh, they they just, I just don't have time for them because I'm just a small business guy trying to get by. And uh, I don't have time to be getting, you know, my my site set down and, uh, and it doesn't make Google happy. And it, it, it really is a battle. I mean, every day it's a battle. And, um, uh, but uh, this is why I had you on there, because right now in the world world right now, there's just so much volatility that there's a, been a serious upswing on IT and security. Am I right about that? Yeah, I mean, 100 percent. And AI is just going to take it to another level. AI changes things 100 percent. And the automated piece of things, the things that the ability for these hackers to use automated processes to do damage is phenomenal. Um, and the companies are becoming more cloud reliant. Uh, they're they're moving their networks to being purely cloud. Uh, when, when those things are unsecured uh, and a hacker can get in and do, just move through their systems so quickly. They, I mean, they just run scripts, they run things and they just automate this this whole process that runs through that does so much damage so quickly that it's it's hard to, for a normal person to even keep up. And it's once they're in, it's really difficult to, to mitigate the the problems that come with it. And everybody thinks that the ransomware is the bad part, which it is. Those things, when they load something on the machines or load something out there, and they use your automated software to push these things out. But really what they've done, at least if they're good hackers, they've sat out there for months and watched who you talk to, how you talk to them, um, what your invoices look like, how the communications go within your company, and they figure all these pieces out. And by the time they're kicking off things like ransomware, they already know everything about you. They know how much money is in your bank account. They know how to get into your bank account. They know how to communicate with your clients. They know how to to uh, to look like you when they send out things. They know they've changed rules within your system, so you're not getting the emails that you that you think you should be getting. And they can choose what's coming and going to you. They can do a lot of damage really, really quickly. Oh yeah, I mean. Listen, uh, we moved our we moved our site to another host last year. It's so big that there's only either I had to buy a server, which I didn't want to do because six months after I purchased it, it's going to be obsolete because yeah. technology is at warp speed. And uh, there were only a couple hosting services at the time that could take it. And um, uh, we're moving it over here to another server or another host this weekend. And uh, just with all the security protocols and everything else that we have to deal with, uh, it, it, it's just very, very time consuming, but security is the name of the game if you want to be on the web. And down the road, everybody's here. There's 8 billion people on the web currently, but business down the road, everything's going to be done on the web. So if you're not, if you don't understand about IT and how important it is, uh, and they, they, they might not be the, you know, the, the constructions of a flashy thing. IT, it, it doesn't have that, that flash. But in my opinion, it is the most important, uh, tooling your tool belt if you want to run a company because if you're not safe on the web it, you're, you're just flirting with danger yeah. and um, and a lot of times uh, some of these software companies that are out there when they do get hacked or whatever, they don't let you know and they point fingers at everybody that he i didn't do it they did it and you can't get any word uh and uh just like you know my podcast platform you know they uh we got a critical warning and we uh, that there was a hole or a patch that was needed on their software. And I and I messaged them. I said, look, I'm unplugging my plug in right now because I don't want to get hacked. You guys need to get this fixed. What, what's your ETA to get this done? And they were like, oh, we're very aware of it. And they drug their feet. You know what I did? I just sent them an email and said, I'm moving on to another host because you guys just aren't taking it seriously. And when I get it, when, when my software tells me I have a critical warning that there's a hole in one of my plugins that I'm using to operate under, I don't want to have that guy get in that hole. And like you said, hang out there for three or four months, you know, and I got nothing to hide. But the bottom line is I don't want to get into my checking account. I don't want to see, him, you know, uh, some of my emails and stuff. But if that hole's there, 
it's like a little mouse. You think that, you know, I just had my boat winterize for the winter. And I told my son, I go, maybe I should put that plug in there. You know, mice can get in there. I don't want them to be in there all winter and, you know, making a mess of things. It's that little, little tiny little area that you let someone in that you don't know about. And and they, and they don't take it. For, and they, they're taking it for granted. But so many people get these warnings and they don't even look at it. I do. And on the minute I saw it, I emailed my web guy and I'm like, hey, what's up with this? He's like, yeah, we got to unplug that thing because we're not sure when they're going to fix it. And of course they come back, oh, we want to keep you as a customer, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, we're going to get it fixed. And uh, they couldn't give me an answer. I'm, I'm leaving. Goodbye. You know, and, but it, it offers someone else, you know, just like yourself, you started your firm, it, it's capitalism. So if they don't get the customer service and everybody jacks their rates, you know, they start out low, their, their customer, and then they get, they get greedy and they jack their rates up. And so I'm just looking for more affordable, uh, with the same amount of security or better, you know, to host my sites. And, um, you know, competition makes the world, you know, a better yeah. place. It, it makes you better too. So and I, I, maybe I'm, you know, going up the wrong tree, but am I no. right? On that? No, you're right. And I think when we come down to these ideas of not plugging your holes and when you know that you have a security risk, you take on a form of liability within that idea. I mean, you have to have your due diligence. Like if there's a known security risk, you need to mitigate that right away. And that's one of the big pieces people don't realize across the board, especially small companies. They don't think they're a target, but they're the easiest target. Uh, their security levels are much lower. They don't have all the processes and policies put in place. They don't have the experts coming there. And yeah, they're not going to, hackers aren't trying to get millions and millions of dollars, but you lose $100,000 from a small company and it can, it can wreck that company. And it's not even that, just your reputation. If your clients get hit, then it looks that, then all of a sudden, if they're hit through you, are they spending money on a false invoice that, that you just can't get back? I mean, your reputation takes a hit. Um, it's it's a massive thing. And then and knowing that you have a hole and not fixing it, I mean, that's just huge liability all the way around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I got rid of, uh, you know, listen, I'm not going to mention names, but I got rid of my antivirus and he uh, gave me this, you know, serious... Uh, uh, antivirus to put on my uh, on my computers and my systems, and we put on everybody's. And this 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 thing it tells me when I'm getting attacked. They blocked it. Uh, it gets way deep down there with malicious and trojans and you know horses and and all this thing. And uh, he just said, "Hey, listen, if this thing doesn't catch it, you know, you're pretty safe with what you're using. But what you're using before." It doesn't work, you know. So I, listen, I called the other guy. I was like, "Look, I, you know, I, I'm getting rid of you. You just, you just, you're not up to the par." And there's so many yeah. people out there that that uh, just use the basic uh, antivirus that's out there. You, you got to do battle today on the web. You got, you know, listen. Practice makes perfection. You got to have some serious, serious antivirus that's on there. That's gonna, that's gonna put up that brick wall. No one's gonna get through. And, oh. One thing you need to be mindful of, though, is antivirus is the bare minimum. Oh, yeah, absolutely. EPN, tracking, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, they, uh, they've changed. So what they've gotten really good at is using systems that aren't considered viruses to your antivirus, like uh, IP scanners, uh, key lock, things that, that, are, that can be tools that are used with IT that your antivirus isn't going to pick up on, that they can load on there and do massive damage. They also use some of the native functions of like things like window windows to call out and pull things down. Uh, PowerShell is one. Um, there's a couple other ones that they can they can use. That, and they use like macros within like Excel and Word. Like when you hit, do you want to enable this macro? They can use things like that that, that do call outs. And then so uh, the new antiviruses are called EDRs. And basically they're they're way better. They're, they're, they do much better at tracking, do all the things you're saying. Um, then you have some next level stuff like we're talking about the zero trust stuff where you actually have an application on your machine that like it learns the, the applications you use, you set it, and then anything else isn't allowed to run. Just period, not allowed to run at all. So whether or not they load something on there that is outside of a virus, still can't run. It just, it controls the environment. Um, that's where things are starting to go is it's getting to the point where you're trying to mit trying to, to figure out how to do productivity plus security is where the, the real balance is coming now. Yeah, like we, you know, listen, before before the roller coaster started, I, you know, I was blogging, but not 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 at the volume that I'm doing today. And I can go to bed at night and all by the time I get up early in the morning, 
I've got all these uh, requests for for content to be posted up on the site. And with the new software that we put on there, uh, there might be an email that I got. And I never I never open. I always preview. Don't ever open up stuff. I just preview to kind of look at it. But the bottom line is I'll, I'll send it to my marketing person and then the software will say, hey, uh, this is a this is the, they've got pixels. They got tracking in here or it won't let me open up the site. And uh, we just go back to these people and say, hey, uh, you, you, you got something wrong with your site or whatever. I can't have you on my site because you, yeah. you might have something and not that I don't trust you, but I don't know who the heck you are. You're just some dude, especially if they just use a Gmail account. And yeah. uh, it's very, very dangerous. Everybody's got Gmail, but if they're not using a company address, you got to be so wary about it. And um, uh, just these little links, you, just, you know, they can just cause so much havoc. It's just, the, you know, I just I had a kidney stone that I passed in the beginning of August. And once I passed it, it was just a little, little speck. But it, it caused so much pain over a week. Oh, my God. So that little email, you think that that's nothing. Oh, my God. It can cause so much headache for you if you if you don't. If you're not if you're not careful, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, it, it it's like anything else. You lock your door at night. You might as well lock your web too, you know, or your or your website door, whether it's your front door, your back door, your side door, your window, your roof, because they're they're trying to get in there any way that they can and just make life miserable for you. And yeah. they don't care about you at all. They don't. And uh, uh, so I'm glad that there are guys like you out there, especially like my web guy. I mean, uh, I found him on Fiverr. You know, it was was one of those things. I just wanted to find someone that was local in the States. And, uh, you know, he was military police. And I was like, yeah, man, let's go rock and roll. And uh, uh, it is probably one of the best decisions that I made. But um, it but it was in it was in my mindset that, wow, I, I, we have so much content on there that the last thing I want to do is have someone go in there and just wreck it. And uh and they can do it. It's like, uh, you know, letting the bull in the China store and, and just turning your head and all of a sudden, man, everything's broken. And well, uh, they can use it as a way to get the people getting to your site, too. They can use it as a, 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 a vector to attack from. So you might not even know they're doing it. People going to your site could be attacked through things like links, and things like that, that, that are loading things onto their machine they don't know about. So it's, yeah, and a smart hacker is not going to cause damage. They're just going to use you as a vector. Yeah. Rather chaos did you see an uptick you know before the roller coaster started or it was it there kind was of already an uptick we uh so we had made some big changes to what we were when we started we were more of a, a reactive fix type coming in just fixing people's networks doing things like that we were we were already there was an uptick and we were becoming much more of a pro proactive shop which is where we are now we're much more we're purely a proactive shop we don't do a lot of the reactive unless we absolutely have to within our clients but uh, we were deeply getting into cybersecurity beforehand, and then when it got going, we got into it uh, big time. And then since, it's actually even gotten worse. Uh, we've dealt with some major cybersecurity attacks that have been, uh, we had one back in September against one of our largest clients, which is a 3,000 employee company. It, it was Russian. Um, they knew what they were doing, uh, came in full attack. We mitigated it, luckily, just in time, but still it was, I think something like between my team and I, it was a couple hundred hours of work to keep it, to get it mitigated. And mm -hmm. just, uh, yeah, they're they're insane the way, and they just, they used uh, Intune, which it's not called, uh, intro with uh, uh, Microsoft, which is basically their cloud version of um, what was called Active Directory, where you have a server that controlled everybody, how they logged in. Um, now they have a cloud version of it, which is where everything's going. But they they had a South American piece that wasn't um, secured on one of their admin profiles, and they got in through that, and they were able to spread super quick. And once they found out that we had figured out what they were doing, they kicked off the ransomware. But luckily, we had uh, multiple layers. We try to layer our cybersecurity approach, so your antivirus or ER. Um, we have what's called a SOC, a Security Operating Center, that we that's a third party that that basically monitors everything is able to, to shut machines down if they think they're being um, that they're part of an attack, and then our zero trust piece, and then we have this thing called DNS filter, which is another piece to the whole puzzle. But because those things were put in place, they were able we were able to stop the ransomware from kicking off and and basically crippling their company. But yeah, it was it was a lot, and we're still dealing with it because now they're on the radar. So the the amount of uh, attempted attacks into their system. Every day, 
is constant. I get calls from the SOC every day, every other day of this, this user has been compromised. Um, we've had to shut it down. They're just, they're brute forcing. Luckily, we've done a really good job of, of controlling and securing the environment, but it's, it's going to be a constant fight with them going forward. Oh, yeah. L listen, it's not going away. It's only going to get more in depth and uh, harder and harder. Who's going to stay in front and no more knowledge? You know, that's that's the uh, the game. But uh, it's like a lacrosse. Hey, you can watch film all week. And by the time the game starts, you might have an injury or that, you know, yep. something might happen. And you got to scrap that plan and figure out how you're going to get, you know, halftime, you know, retool you know, replan how you're going to, you know, try to win at the end of the game. And, you know, listen, as long as you win, winning ugly is not, but I'd yeah. rather win ugly and be safe than lose and have to deal with a lot of damage. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and uh, so uh, what do you see, uh, you know, moving forward as we go into 2024, you know, uh, what's the newest, coolest thing that's going to come in, you know, with IT just in general? I think as a whole, it's going to be education. I think uh, the it's not the 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 sexiest, the most pretty thing to go out there, but I think companies are going to learn to really educate their employees. I think um, what it comes down to is it's not the hackers aren't trying to brute force their way in through things. They aren't using these crazy tools. What they're doing is they're just tricking the average person that's busy that has things going on to make a mistake. And that's been that's the low hanging fruit. The low hanging fruit is always going to be the keys the key piece for them. I mean, you're going to get to the level where like, if you're a big company and you're, you're a target, you're going to have some big players coming after you, but as a whole, it's educating them. It's making them understand how they're like, what emails are, are not what they think they are. Um, it's also setting up your systems so that it's telling your employees, like you can set up your email to say, Hey, even though this email looks like it's coming from inside the company, it's not like little things, but I think education is going to be a big piece. That's, that's, that's what we're going with a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of things that we we put out there that are pretty cool and they do a lot of cool stuff, but they can still be gotten around if somebody gives out their password or somebody links. And now even with MFA, um, you have these things called man in the middle attacks where they put a proxy in between uh, what you're trying to log into and where you're logging in from. And it sends you back your MFA idea and you put your MFA in it, passes along and you just bypass the whole MFA. So. Um, it's really education is going to be the key piece. People have got to learn to teach people. They've got to put policies and procedures in place. They've got to be fast acting, make sure you're getting backups, making, sh making sure that you're securing those backups. Um, it's, it's just going to be part of, it's, it's like the whole HR thing with like, uh, sexual harassment. Like it, it got to the point where it had to be talked about all the time. Cybersecurity mm -hmm. is going to be the same thing. It just needs to be talked about. And the more it's talked about, the less low hanging fruit you're going to have out there to, to take advantage of. And sometimes the low hanging fruit is you, the, the owner of the company, because you're busy, you're doing things and you're not paying attention and you can click things. We had another client that one of their top uh, developers that knows better accidentally clicked through and he had admin rights. Luckily, I mean, he caught it right away, but he get, gave out his password. We were able to mitigate it really quickly, but Anybody can be hit just because you're busy and you click on something. You just aren't thinking at the time, or, or maybe you're stressed out about something and you're, you're in another world and click through something. But I think education and testing and understanding things helps things a ton. So I, I always tell people, when in doubt, don't open it. If it's in your yeah. junk box, it's probably junk. And, uh, you know, you just have to look at things and, and believe me, I get so many emails today and uh, I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes one, you know, here and there. And, uh, but, uh, my IT guy, he is, he just reads the riot act, you know, once yeah. a week, with, you know, with whoever's on, you know, uh, you know, we have a small team, but the bottom line is we're all going out. And the last thing you, last thing you want to do is just be not, be not live on the web because, you know, time is money and, uh, and it's money to get things fixed too. And yeah. uh, and uh, you and and you want to pick the right IT guy that has the same vision, and you want to do you want to do some background checks on these on whoever that's going in there because 100%. you you never know who's going to go in there, and you you know you're yeah. you're kind of you're kind of like uh you know an attorney just about yeah. you know because you're going to find all the little things that that no one knows about and see stuff and. Uh, it's just, I tell people, I used to tell people, look, when you go and become an entrepreneur, you start your business, you want to have a good attorney, you want to have a good doctor, and you want to have a good CPA. Now, 
can add an IT guy there too yep. because he's the backbone. Because without them, you're you're fine. You know, you just don't have any. You have no protection. You don't have a face guard on. You don't have any gloves on. You you're just you're going to get hit eventually by someone. Right. And uh, so, uh, very very informed. So listen, if you're out there on commercial construction coffee talk land and you're thinking about upgrading your IT or you, you had an issue and you're not sure if it's got fixed or whatever, if, if someone wanted to reach out to you and find out, uh, bounce some questions off you, how would they contact you? Um, our website's technologyresponse.com. Um, they can connect with me directly at chris at technologyresponse.com or they can hit info at technologyresponse.com and that goes to my team. So either way, easy way to get hold of us. Uh, website's super friendly, easy to navigate. Um, it has some reviews and things on there to add some credibility to who we are and what we do. And like you were saying, um, finding somebody that fits the culture of your company is super important too. The, the, the IT person that, that has the same kind of vision business-wise, that's one of our key pieces too for us is is working with clients that are that that share a similar um, culture and vision that we do. So, you know, I always like talking with athletes because they get it. You know, you might have a great team, but you have some guy that has a, has a chip on his shoulder or a bad attitude or he's negative and yep. you want that going, going through the locker room or on the sidelines. And that guy's got to go because yeah. he's, he's a detriment to the team. So when you're picking when you're picking your IT person or your attorney or whatever, you know, someone that's going to help you with your business, having that same vision and just mindset is is such a plus because. After you hire them and you spend all your time and then it doesn't work out and then you leave, then you got to start over again. Yep. So, you can't unspoil milk. That's the thing. It's like once somebody's spoiled milk, you can't unspoil them. You can hope, you can pray, you can do whatever. But once somebody's spoiled milk, you can't unspoil milk. And that's just the way it goes. It'll spread throughout the team quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, if everyone wants to get in touch with me, I'm at David C at CCR-Mag.com. Uh, listen, like I said, the way Chris got on here, publicist sent me a press release. I just launched our IT column a couple of months back. So I thought it would be a good time to uh, have them on here as well as we were at the end of the year. So people are thinking about, you know, what are they going to do for 2024? If you're not IT secure, this is one of the things that should be on the top of your to-do list, in my opinion. Uh, so, and look, it's like playing the lottery. If you don't buy a ticket, you can't, you know, you can't win. So if you don't send me something to look at, I can't either put you on the show or it's very tough to get in the magazine, but a lot of a lot of content that we get, we post it all up on all our social media. We blog every day. So let me be the judge. It can be an anniversary. It could be a new product announcement, uh, you know, a charity golf tournament. You know, shoot, you know, one of the things that I found out over the last three and a half years of the of roller coaster is there's more to life than just work. So I post stuff about, you know, how to buy you know, the right right to insurance or the right cell phone or I even have how to buy the right hair extension. Shoot, they're, you know, guys think that they're girls some days or you know, girls think they're their guys. Hey, listen, they want to learn. How to, we put that up there, too. Half my circulation is female. So we got to cater to them. So but we look at everything. And uh, so send it to us and then we'll send you the link. You share it. It's good for your SEO, which is search engine optimization. You find Google and, uh, you know, that's what it's all about is, you know, making sure that the algorithms find us. And, and, and on that, listen, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button too. Let's. This is a very important topic, so everybody can get this. Uh, you know, story that Chris is talking about. You know, about his firm and helping uh, you know, clients. You know, keep their uh, you know, computers and networks, et cetera, safe. And uh, it's a very, very important issue. And if you're out there in the business world, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so, Chris, as we finish up the year, uh, and you know, we've got a month left. You got Thanksgiving coming up this week, and then. Uh, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, I'll throw Festivus out there for those of you who know what that is from uh, Jerry Seinfeld way back when. Uh, and then New Year's and boom, we're going into 2024. Uh, if you had to leave one positive thought or phrase with our listeners out there at Commercial Construction Coffee Talk, what would it be? The obstacle is the way. It's a stoic phrase. The idea that the hard road is the way to go. It's the, the what, what leads to the most success. Like you got to overcome your obstacles and can't shy away and take the easy road. Always the hard way is, is is actually the path that you should be going down. Yeah, I just uh, I just wrote uh, in my publisher's column. I was talking about uh, you know Oscar, I was talking about fear and yeah. technology, and that that a lot of people you know it's really just button one hundred and one. But 
the bottom line is you can't, you have to get rid of your fear. If you, if you can't face fear, you're not going to be a success. I don't care what you do. And it's just like getting bucked off a horse. What's the first thing you do? You brush yourself off and you get back on. You're going to make mistakes. That's how you learn. And uh, so I, I had it in my publisher comment, you know, so I'm right there with it, with the obstacles. You, you're going to have obstacles in both professionally and personally all through your life. You got to be ready for them. You have to know how to deal with them because you want to have a positive, you know, result. And even if there's a negative, you got to be able to turn it into a positive yeah. some way or fashion. There's always something to be taken away from everything. There's always a lesson to be learned. Yeah. So love that quote. Um, so with that said, just a couple things uh, as we finish up. Number one, if you're on that construction site, we want you to be safe. All right. So you can get home, see your dog, your, your wife, your kids, have dinner, catch some Z's and go be able to do it with the, you know, the next day. Number two, it's all about hydration. OK, we want you to stay hydrated, even though it's not hot. It's getting a little chilly. Old man, winter's going to be here before you know it. But the bottom line is you still have to stay hydrated. Dehydration, you get headaches, you make mistakes, and that's when you get hurt. So we want you to be safe on the site and we want you to stay hydrated. Um, so. This has been, an, listen, I, like I said, I always like talking to Denverites. Uh, pleasure having you on the show. And uh, hopefully I'll get to meet you one of these times yeah. when I come out there. Uh, you know, you can, uh, we'll go out. I'll, I'll bring my stick. We'll uh, we'll do some wall ball or whatever. I haven't played you know? forever. Yeah, for sure. I still yeah, have my it, garage, so. It, it's like it's like riding a bike, you know. <laughs> It just is, you know, I'm, I'm right handed, but I can still, you know, I play in the old man's league and, you know, I'm still out there. I told someone, I said, look, Gordy Howe played till he was uh, played hockey till he was 63. And I told my wife, I said, look, even though I've had both my ass yells, but as long as I can go up and down the field, uh, you know, after that, it'll be my wheelchair. But the bottom line is I'm going to play until, you know, my time is done. Uh, it's just uh, it's the best sport ever. And and, and just like uh, being on the frozen pond too, you know, playing hockey, I just, um, you know, I got to I got I, I you know what I've had goal plenty of goals in my life, so I don't need the glory. I'm just looking for so many shifts to to keep my myself kind of you know intact right. you know, where I'm coming from. So, yeah. but we'll grab that stick out of your garage and we'll do some wall ball. You yeah, know, you can wear out or you can rest out. Your choice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, Chris, say goodbye for Denver and wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye, happy Thanksgiving. And thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to sign off from uh, Sugar Hill, uh, just below the Beaufort Dam on Lake Lanier. Oh, about uh, 25 miles north of uh, downtown Atlanta. And listen, this week when you have Thanksgiving, don't talk politics unless you want unless you want to have, uh, you know, someone leave or whatever. But that's your choice. But listen, have fun, eat some food, uh, watch some football and uh, clean your mind recharge get rid of all the negativity and get ready for the last month because it's going to go like that because like i said boom you got hanukkah you got thanksgiving and then christmas comes up and then new year's and boom we're right into 2024 and uh, listen 2023 has been an unbelievable year uh, i can't believe i'm even saying that it's already i just thought it was january 1st 2023 and boom here i am and i'm ringing in the new year in about a month but uh uh, you know, I've had my seatbelt on, but in 2024, I think I'm going to have to tighten it a little more because I think it might get a little bumpy before it gets a little smoother. But you know what? I'm going to have fun. I'm going to have a smile and I'm going to, you know, battle every day and enjoy every minute of it because life's short and you got to make the best of it. So with that said, Chris, I look forward to meeting you out in Denver. In the mile Definitely. high, when you get out there. And for all you out there in commercial construction and coffee talk, we will see you next time on another episode. Chris, thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Ciao. Man, thank you. Appreciate it. You bet.